Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Empower Hour brought to you by the Empower Plant from Facing Brooks. I'm Dana Brooks, and I am joined today by our uh, panel. We've got Elizabeth Hughes back. She's going to give us a, 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 keep giving us kind of a youthful perspective and from her, uh, her vantage point as a college student and as a young person coming up in the world. Uh, we have Rose Caswick, always our law partner, who's got that very important task of giving us our drink of the week. So we're going to get right to that in a minute, but welcome back, Rose. And then we have Whitney, our producer, Whitney Morris. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for making this a, a priority. Um, but let's talk about priorities. Let's talk about the first one. We've got a drink today, and I'm super excited because I like the person it's in honor of. She's one of my, my, uh, she Rose from way back when. Rose, what's our drink and who are we honoring today? We are honoring Gloria Steinem, uh, you know, feminist extraordinaire, and we are or, uh, honoring her with a New York sour. It's a take on a whiskey sour with a red wine float on top, and I'm super what? proud of my float. So I achieved. Okay, hold that. up. This is like a whiskey sour. Yeah. But that was not enough. We needed to float something on we the needed top. Needed to float some fruity. So we decided to float. We floated red wine on this. Yes, okay. apparently Gloria is a red wine and scotch lover. So we put them both together. All right. I love it. Mm -hmm. here's, to, here's to Gloria. And if any of you have not seen that movie, what is it, Whitney? Is it on Hulu? The, the I don't Gloria? know, but I did just have gum. So this is an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing. And it's, for you, it's a mojito. Yes. Oh, there you go. Exactly. No, I like it. It's I don't. I'm not a whiskey bourbon person. Or what is it in here? Scotch. Scotch. The one I didn't say. <laughs> uh, so, but I like that. I like that. A lot. I, I like a sour drink. I like a whiskey sour. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But I love. I love her. She's just a tough broad. You know, yeah. somebody got on to me one time and said, "You can't use the word broad. That's offensive to women." Now it was a man explaining that to me. <laughs> yeah. You should be offended. And I and I, I let him know that since I was using the word. And uh, I was re referring to other women that I, I felt comfortable with it, but I really did appreciate his concern for me. No, that's not at all how that went. <laughs> <laughs> I use my words. I'm a grown woman. I'll choose them and I don't need you to correct me. Thank you though. Um, I want to talk today about something really important because it's Valentine. Well, it's, it's, it's February. So that makes me think of Valentine's and most people think of uh, romantic relationships and being in love and things like that. But uh, when I started thinking about that, I thought, wow, some of the most significant relationships in my life have been my relationship with friends, uh, women friends. And when I think over losses of relationships, uh, and you know, I know of which I speak on this, y'all, uh, romantically, but the ones that really kicked my rear end were the loss of very, you know, intense female friendship relationships. Those are the ones that really make you go, golly, you know, that's a, a big void in my life or, or I really need to work on that. And a lot of times we just take our, our female friendships for granted because we're going through the day, we've got commitments, we've got work, we've got family, those sorts of things. And we just assume our girlfriends will kind of always be there for us. But those relationships need to be nurtured just like anything else does. Um, Elizabeth, do you have any uh, uh, particular friendships like that? Or have you had the experiences where you're just really thankful for your girlfriends? And how do you maintain those relationships? So right now it's kind of tough because my best friends are all gone away for college, um, eight hours and four hours away. And these are my friends I've had since middle school. And one of them since I was probably about five years old. So uh, the, how we've managed to Keep in, keep in touch has been through um, texting, calling, using Snapchat, just every form of social media that we have. And we're, we're still going. So it's a good thing. And I love my girlfriends. They're some of my favorite people to hang out with and go do fun things with. You know, you can't um, do the same thing with your guy friends that you can your girlfriend. Well, they have a different experience. You know, that's that's one thing is you could be close to, you know, guys and things like that, but they haven't had a female experience. So there's a limit in, you know, a lot of what you can, you know, share or what they can help you go through, I would think. But, um, you know, Whitney, I thought about you because you are um, a little bit older than Elizabeth and you're, you're, a lot of your friends are kind of going into that. I'm settling down on a career stage. I'm maybe getting married. I'm maybe buying a house stage. But not everybody's you know, ready to get 
to that level. Um, so it's kind of, that's a, that, at least for me, that was an age time where some of those friendships sort of took different directions that had been so close for so long. Um, what, what's your friendship situation like and how do you feel about maintaining your, your friends? Do you feel like you're outgrowing them? Are y'all growing together? How's that working for you? Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I have had a unique situation. Um, I've, I've lost friends over the years. Um, I think most of the time we grow apart. Um, but sometimes uh, there's a fight involved <laughs> or there's a difference in opinion or, you know, whatever. And it's just like, hey, we're just growing in different ways, different paths. We're taking different paths. And, um, you know, that's just how it is. But I've had one long-term friend uh, and I think we're going to be friends forever. I really don't see anything um, getting in between that. But um because we've gone through so many things together. I, I met her when I was a freshman and, you know, gosh, we did, we went through so much together. Um, I moved away and then I came back and then she, she's moved away now. So we're, we're apart now. Um, and we're able to keep some kind of a consistent relationship friendship. Um, and it's, it's something about not being too close to where you can't, go a day without texting or without talking to them, but then um, being able to talk to them about anything. So it's kind of, I think that's my recipe for a long lasting relationship. Um, and I, one of the things I looked up before uh, talking about this is lasting friendships, meaning are, are, are lasting because you can talk about things, because you can talk about them about anything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, recently I found myself being kind of passive aggressive with my best friend. And I'm like, this is my best friend. I can talk to her about anything. So, you know, having that comfort, I think that's kind of the mm -hmm. key to sustaining a long friendship with a woman. Knowing, knowing, <laughs> so, knowing somebody loves you on your bad day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sees the best in you. Rose, what about you? You did a pretty uh, bold thing when you graduated law school, you moved up here. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think you, did you know anybody? And nope, not a soul. <laughs> That's pretty bold. Now, now she has all <laughs> us. <laughs> now, oh, yeah. now you're 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 famously introverted. That's not mm -hmm. a surprise. But uh, but you do have uh, friendships, and you do keep up with people in sort of non traditional ways. Rose is one of the most interesting people you'll ever meet. Uh, mm -hmm. She won't share a whole lot of that about you, but she's she's got uh, she's a, she's like a little onion. She's very layered. <laughs> <laughs> she's very layered and she's got a lot of uh, diverse interests. Tell me, tell me about what you do to maintain your friendships and, and how important they are to you and what you do, especially when you don't live in the same community as your friends. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I am not very friendly, so I've always <laughs> had a, sort of a small core of friends and I've of course had some people peel off the edges and some people come in. Um, but it's really been like two or three really close best friends. And, um, with some of them, it's like, I pretty much, it's actually different. Like one of my best friends, I cannot talk to for days or weeks and then we'll text or call and talk for hours and hours and hours. We go on vacations together, that kind of thing. One, I talk to pretty much on a daily basis, not voice, but texting. We're always sharing stuff back and forth with each other. So, and those people that I'm friends with, I've been friends with one of them since middle school and the others since high school. And the middle school friend, I haven't gone to school with them since middle school. And we kept in contact initially back in the olden days by email yeah. and then eventually, you know, smartphones and all that. But um, it's definitely hard as an adult to make friends and to make friends outside of work. And apparently I just won't do it because I'll keep my old friends forever. <laughs> I'm your friend, Rose. Even whether you like it or not. <laughs> I am too, even though she doesn't want me to be her friend. I'm here. Ah, I thought, I thought Carrie, <laughs> my, my law partner, Carrie Rohn, just joined us. Carrie had a, a mediation today, so I'm glad that wrapped up in time for her to join us because Carrie uh, does what we all need to be doing and we don't do, and that is go the extra step of walking your talk and making sure you make special time for your friendships and you make them a priority. You just came back from a weekend with your girlfriends, didn't you, Carrie? Yeah, my high school girlfriends, my childhood high school girlfriends. And Tell us about it. Really, we have a couple of them that are much more diligent. There, are, We have a couple of them that are a lot more diligent about planning it than I am, but um, I, I'm just really lucky. I, I'm uh, just really you know, fortunate to have such good 
down to earth, easygoing, relaxing, fun friends in my life still after 30 something years, more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really special. It's really nice. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need to have some people you can decompress. A lot of people go, oh, I don't want to, you know, it's a bunch of, you know, hen party and hen packing and they're just going to do nothing but run men into the ground and stuff like that. Um, that's not what happens whenever I get around my girlfriends. Usually we went out to dinner last night, a bunch of us got together and basically my jaws hurt the next day. I just laugh. I'm just yeah. laughing and cracking up and yeah. then better say, things to talk about than men. Yeah. I'm just like, if you had any idea how little time <laughs> we, our days are filled with uh, dealing with men, we certainly are going to use our free time. <laughs> to, to uh, dwell on that but tell me the kind of things that you all have done is that the first time you've had a trip where y'all went all went away Carrie so last year um we all went away together and went to Tampa for Gasparilla and we're, we're kind of scattered around the country so we've got Michigan Las Vegas a bunch of people in Florida so we try to centralize it and then this year um we did Boca Grande but I also have um, I still have a really good relationship with my sorority big sister from college and a couple of my college girlfriends. So I think the key is, is traveling. I think it's picking a weekend where everybody goes somewhere where it's dedicated. It's on the calendar. Your husband knows about it. Everybody at work knows about it and you're just gone. Uh -huh. So my, my sorority big sister, who's a really good friend of mine, we've gone on some, on some great trips together. And then same with my college girlfriends that live here in Tallahassee we will actually go to breakfast, which was one of their ideas because that's the easiest time to schedule something because you don't have any after school activities. You typically don't have a business meeting at 7 a.m. in the morning. Right. And we have the best time at breakfast. So that's smart. I think it's really all about the scheduling, you know? That's, that's so smart. Whitney, you work with a, a coach, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think one of the things you were sharing with me, one of the things that it's Audra Fournier and, and, and anybody who kind of pays attention to anything knows she's in mine and Jimmy's orbit. We think a lot of her. She's done a lot. She to, did to an empower hour a few weeks yeah. ago. So yeah. if you guys want to check that out. Yeah. You can go back and yeah. look at that episode. But anyway, she's a coach. And um, doesn't she tell you, Whitney, the importance of scheduling things, like literally making time for things like like Carrie said, you know, if you put a breakfast on your calendar at seven there's mm -hmm. probably not much that's going to bump that other than a sick kid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, scheduling has um, honestly changed my life quite a lot. Um, I, I sometimes I feel very overwhelmed with what I have to do that day, or if um, something comes up and I, oh, I, I don't want to do that now, but I know I have to do it. Uh, scheduling a time for that, making yeah. sure uh, it's on your calendar and you know that and now that it's on your schedule you have to do it you just yeah. you can't let something go by you can't let yeah. something go by you'd have to physically go in there and edit you know edit change day to yeah. actually you know avoid it so it, it it definitely helps me make sure i get things done stay on top of my work all that stuff yeah i one of my goals for the uh, year was to make my women friends a better priority a greater priority and so Every time I will think of somebody, I've got a running note on my phone. I've used the notes feature of my phone a lot and I'll dictate things I need to get to. And then that eventually makes its way onto my calendar. But I will just start making a list of these women. Um, and so I looked at it the other day and I had like eight people on that list. And I thought, wow, look at what I already have, you know, available to me. These wonderful, wonderful women. I mean, and I was sh shot for the stars. I'm like, I don't even know her very well, but I think she's cool. We're gonna be friends. <laughs> be my friend, please. Yeah, it's like a it's like a friend wish list. Mm -hmm. That's cool. But no, really, I did because I thought, you know what, I need to be in this. You know, this person's into the same thing I'm into. I bet we can, you know, potentiate each other or our work or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do that. But one of the things I did last year, um, at the end of February, I went on a uh, women's retreat. This is something Jimmy Fasick's big on. He's big on retreats of purposeful uh, travel, you know, purpose, intentional travel. Um, and it was just, um, just, it was a bunch of women and they were from all over uh, the country. A lot of them on the West Coast, some, some of us in the South, some on the East Coast. But the only thing we had in common was just very positive people trying to meet other people and do good things and reach goals. And they, they call it, your 10 X version. You ever heard somebody say that? Say, what is your 10 X version? Like what is the 10 times where you are now? And I didn't know, 
I mean, there's a lot of things I learned in that group, but I made friends in that group. There was only one common connection for me to that group. And it's the, my book editor who is in um, Connecticut. And she knew these people from the West Coast. Well, just in one year, some of these people have become very important people in my life. I mean, I communicate with them, if not daily, several times a week. Uh, one of them wrote some, uh, reviewed my book for me. You know what I mean? And they've been, really enriched my life. And especially during COVID, it's, it's interesting to see how people are coping with it and their different challenges in different parts of the country. So I was gonna ask everybody because uh, believe it or not, I'm very introverted. I, I look like I'm not, but I am. I know Whitney, you are. Rose, you are. Not everybody is, you know, social butterfly like Carrie Rome. <laughs> yeah. and, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hughes has never met a stranger. She will go up to a stranger's door, knock, 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 and tell you how enthusiastic she is about a political <laughs> candidate. She's fearless. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, I'm not that way. I'm not that way. No, I can. I can do a cocktail party. I can be the life of any party because it's a limited. <laughs> <laughs> it's a limited thing. I just come in, I'm on, I'm Dana, and then I leave and go right back home and watch Netflix by myself. But um, how do y'all meet friends? Those of you who are a little you know, less social. Um, Rose, what do you do? You said you can maintain your, your friendships that you've had a long time, but do you do anything to actually try to grow your network of, of friends? I do not. <laughs> I admit I'm myself. not interested. Please don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> I for me, I have a hard time juggling a lot of people. Like I want to focus on the people that I want to focus on. I want to have time for those people, be able to set the time aside. And I don't want to be going to brunch with a bunch of acquaintances. Mm -hmm. So no, it's I like, mean, it's almost, it, there's a difference because to me, it almost turns into networking, not really yeah. friendship building. And I can network all day long. That's, you know, kind of, I'm very, very good at that. But in terms of turning that into a real relationship, I realize I know a ton of people, but do I know them or am yeah, I? I'm, it's going to be hard for me to take the time to invest in developing a close bond with someone new and because I'm already overwhelmed with what I have. So, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Rose and I tried to do a book club one time. Um, that's how a lot of women I think makes make time for female relationships is through book clubs or what finding something through? that you you enjoy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whitney, you you've been in a book club for a few years, haven't you? Yeah, I think since 2017. It's been a while. Um, yeah, we don't do so great great at it either, um, especially since COVID and everything. Zoom. It's like it's not really sexy to be on Zoom and talk about. Yeah. Having a drink, talking about a book on Zoom, so it's not the same. But, yeah. uh, but it is, but it is something. It is an effort, and I think, but for the at least the guys of the book club, you all who are in the club might have kind of scattered and gone in the wind and not made each other a priority too, don't you think? Potentially, um, you know what? I want to talk about this thing. Has anybody ever suffered a friendship loss? And to me, that oh, yeah. like like a friend divorce. You know what I mean? Like a, wow. I, I had that happen to me and it was a uh, pure, this is many, many, many years ago. And it was a hundred percent my fault <laughs> in retrospect. It really was. I was, uh, it was my pride and my ego, my hubris, uh, and my unwillingness to admit that I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and eventually this person and I, you know, kind of reconnected, but never like we were this person was, you know, my best friend, but it was just one incident. We got sideways and I handled it terribly poorly because I was just, I knew better and I was right and blah, blah, blah. Turns out I, I was not right. I did not know better. I was clearly in the wrong uh, and I should have apologized for it, but it hurt me deeply. My, I remember I was married at the time and my husband was just shook. He was just like, I've never seen something take you to your knees like this. This is just, this is undana-like behavior. But has anybody ever experienced a, a loss? Maybe somebody moved away. Maybe you just grew apart, or maybe you know an actual loss of somebody. Anybody experienced anything like that? You know, I haven't. I'm um, ex oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Who, who wants to go? Uh, Gary, I'll go. I haven't really experienced a loss like that. I I have two things to say. I I experienced a little because I do have a lot of good friends that don't live here, mm -hmm. and it's hard for me. Like coming back from this weekend with my childhood friends, it's such a pure bond. It's so easy, it's so relaxing, there's no judgment. It's just nothing but laughter and just ease. Um, you know, you when you bond as kids, you bond over really who you are as care in your character mm -hmm. without 
bonding over situational, you know, it's not like we had kids in school together or anything like that. So when I came back to Tallahassee and I left all my friends again, I was sad. You know, yeah. I was like kind of let down. I was like, man, they make me feel like myself. And now I'm back to real life and I have to go back to work, back to kids, back to being a mom, house, husband, all that stuff. And not that that's not who, it's part of who I am, but really just me at my core, you know, being around girlfriends allows me to be me. And I love that. And it is hard to do. You have to make yourself do it because there's so many other things you should be doing like your, you know, stuff for your kids, but it is so rewarding when you push yourself to do it. Um, but yeah, I le I'm, I'm left with like just kind of sadness and some emptiness after situations like that. Yeah. So I, um, my, the second thing I wanted to say is I haven't really had a breakup, but I'm interested to know from those who are in the group about how you draw your boundaries, because I think I need to do a lot better of a job with boundaries, with like toxic relationships or negative relationships. But I always feel so guilty with doing that with girlfriends. And I'm so proud of my friends who have been able to have good boundaries and been able to stick up for what they really believe in and need in a friendship. Whereas I have a hard time doing that. So I wind up accepting a lot of people as friends or accepting a lot of characteristics in friends that I don't really like, you know? Well, you know, uh, uh, my uh, therapist has a, a, a therapist who, who shares space with him and they discuss this a lot because he, he's a man and she's a woman. And, and she always talks about toxic, what you call it, toxic politeness mm. in women, um, especially, you know, those of us who take being Southern very seriously, you know, it's like you could murder somebody, but please don't be impolite, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> please say um, you're sorry as you're murdering yeah. them. Please please have say, excuse me while you stab them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Murder somebody, but have manners about it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But, you but don't embarrass the family. <laughs> Who raised you? Wipe, wipe your shoes off before you come inside. Don't make a mess. Right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that's what she described. She says, you know, God, I get so frustrated with these women who can't can't get their life where they want because they're so afraid of not being polite or, or hurting somebody's feelings. And then what I find happens is if I'm pushed and pushed and pushed, I'll kind of explode out and then I won't say it the way I want to say it. It'll be an eruption. And then I do look like a bitch instead of just going, you know when this happened, it made me feel this way. And so this, I'm experiencing this right now. So I got a lot of that kind of stuff. I got to work on delivery and communication, but, um, but yeah, what were you going to say, Elizabeth, you were about to say something about uh, when we were talking about experiencing a loss of a friendship to me, it's, it's far. And I, like I said, I've, I've gotten divorced um, and that's no fun. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, but boy, losing an important friend. I, it was just, took me to my knees. I don't know how else to describe it. What were you thinking about when I said that? I was going to say the same thing as Carrie, that I haven't experienced deep loss of friends. Um, some of my friends have, you know, we've just drifted apart and it's been kind of mutual. And I mean, maybe it's because I haven't done my part to stay connected with them, or maybe it's because I, it just wasn't meant to be. But uh, when my friends do come home from college and whenever we all get together, it's, rejuvenating and it makes me happy it makes them happy and we get to share our stories from you know the semester or um, the year that it's been and I love hearing that my friends my my friends are succeeding and they're doing well yeah. and I love hearing their stories because it just makes me so happy yeah I, I'd like to do that I think it's well Whitney sent out some articles about it it actually improves your health whenever you make I read that maintain good mm. uh, girlfriend relationships. And I imagine it's just from a very practical way, nothing magical about it is I imagine, you know, like when I talk to my girlfriends, it's usually by text, uh, a lot of them, but um, like one of them, she keeps me in the know about supplements, you know, uh, or some exercise thing or something, you know, to make my hair look better or whatever. She's just, you know, that's how I get that knowledge. And that in turn kind of will turn you into being more healthful in your choices, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what you, what you do. If you are around your, uh, surround yourself with people who value health, you're probably going to get off the couch more often. You know, it's just one of those things you, you, you do, you are who you hang out with and that's the truth. So you kind of need to be very intentional about it and make sure you're being around people who lift you up. I always like my, it when you play. My youth pastor says, uh, show me your friends. I'll show you your future. That's what yeah. he told us um, whenever he was, you know, whenever we had in service, mm -hmm. uh, youth services. Yeah. And yeah. that is so true because yeah. you are who you hang out with. 
-hmm. Yeah. And I tell people this, I liken it to um, playing a sport. If you play tennis, Carrie, you would know this. If you play tennis, you don't want to play with somebody as good as you or not as good as you. You want to play with somebody better than you. They -hmm. bring up your game. And I feel like, I feel like that needs to be something we aspire to in everything, every relationship, you know, like I want to date somebody who's a little bit better of a person than me (laughs) to make me a better person. Or I want to, you know, I want friends who have healthy habits. So I will, you know, pick up and and, um, be a little bit more healthy in my behaviors too. Rose, what are you, what are you thinking about whenever you talk about um, maintaining these relationships book clubs, distance, that sort of thing. Do you do, you used to watch movies and do podcasts. How do you, how do you keep up with your friends when you're not literally in the same town? What kind of? Really none of my friends are here. (laughs) They're all in distant places. So um, one of them I do podcasts with. So we do one uh, podcast that's every other week and one that's monthly. And so we've got to do that no matter what. We usually get together in between times too, but um, we at least have that, you know, every other Monday night, we're going to be doing the podcast. So we're going to get plenty of time together. And then the others is just making time um, to get away really is. Yeah, you travel with your, what what you used to. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like we would do events. We would, you know, go to concerts. We would go on weekend vacations or longer vacations or uh, go to the theme parks or whatever. Mm -hmm. We'd come with a reason to get away where we can all meet up and not be stressed. Yeah. And do fun things. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, why why are grown people going to amusement parks? But basically everybody I know who has gone to amusement parks uh, since COVID is an adult. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, don't know. I don't really know anybody's taking their kids but if I can you talk. haven't gotten if you haven't gotten drunk around the world at Epcot <laughs> you don't you don't know what you're talking about you just don't know <laughs> get passed out in under a little windmill over it there is, I mean I was like last time I went I was like I'm surprised there wasn't a bar fight with these you know these big guys <laughs> drinking I mean I'm I'm shocked <laughs> don't ruin Disney um no everybody I know I, I like to do stuff like that I like to do stuff that's it it keeps the fun in your life. And I think if you are like, you know, go skydiving, go, you know, hot air balloon, do something kind of fun, uh, make a story, make a memory, I think. Yeah. Um, Let's see. That's a good point. Um, Elizabeth, what kinds of things do you do with your friends to stay tight? Like, um, do y'all go to, like Carrie said, y'all, she goes to breakfast with some people. Do you have a a set date that you do things Um, or like Rose's podcast, anything like that? We don't have really set dates, but my friends who are in, uh, in this area, we get together, we'll go get our nails done. We'll go have a pedicure because that way we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. We're getting together. We can talk about, you know, things that are going on, laugh a little bit, but we're also getting our nails done, which is probably way overdue. Yeah, and, well, that's what we're trying uh, to do. Relaxing is, at the same time. You're trying to, if you're a woman, you're trying to kill three birds or at least three or four birds with every stone. You're, you're trying to get a, a lot of stuff done. Um, yeah. What I'm finding, and I think the calendaring thing is, is important because when I started looking at the list of these women that I wanted to get with, and, and, you know, my priorities for the year, the people I want to reconnect with, um, you know, all I have to do is just reach out. It's, it's not some kind of monumental task to, to reconnect with these people. Um, That's you know, what I try to do. You know, yeah. if somebody's name runs across my brain, I'll just send them a quick text, say, hey, I uh, hope you have a great day thinking of you, whatever. And then I'll say, you know, if we haven't seen each other in a while, let's get together sometime for lunch, breakfast, yeah. whatever works for you. You know, yeah. I can pretty much make it work. Yeah. My, my thing is I've got to make myself just get up and do it because I do get very comfortable in my routine, kind of isolating and stuff. COVID sure as heck didn't make any of this any easier. Um, let me ask you this. Have any of you ever had an issue where you, your friend did not like your romantic person? Like there was a conflict between your friend set and your love interest. Carrie, did that ever happen to you when you were growing up with these women and going to college? It's been so long. (laughs) It's been so long. (laughs) I don't know that anybody didn't like somebody. They made made a fair amount of fun at me for some of the people that I chose, which was probably right. But I think it was more so to never really choose a guy over your friends because guys come and go. You know, yeah. guys are in and out and they change a lot and, but your friends are always going to be there. And let me tell you, 
30, 40 years later, that's absolutely the case. When I'm, you know, sitting there having drinks with my middle school girlfriends or elementary school girlfriends, they're still there for me. Whereas, you know, guys have come and gone, but, um, you know, I, I think what Elizabeth was saying was really good earlier about just doing like pedicures. Mm -hmm. We, um, some of my um, friends in the neighborhood, um, will go for walks together. Hey, yeah. I'm going for a walk. Anybody want to come? We'll send a group text. So I'm getting a lot better and I'm working on this, um, is sending texts instead of just interacting on social media. So mm -hmm. it creates a conversation like a group text, I think is really good. And then I have some friends that are doing videos, which I think is the cutest thing. They'll send a video instead of a text. It's like 30 seconds long. Maggie Cook started doing that. Did you see that? No, I didn't Maggie see that. Cook, she, she, if you haven't seen the Comeback Stronger show with Maggie Cook in it, you, you're missing something. She's fantastic, but she does that. She'll send like a little quick video or something. And I like it because, you know me, I don't want to actually talk to a human ever. Yeah. Ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm revealing my deep. You're so bad. I even apologize because I accidentally called you earlier today. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call, call you. Her. I was trying to text you. <laughs> no. Um, I, 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 I like the video text because I get I get the inflection. You know, text is not great sometimes. Yeah. You know, you you can really re read something the wrong way if you want to. If your headset's not right, you know, yeah. you can be yeah. like, "What the hell is she saying that?" Well, that's bitchy. What the hell? And then that person did not mean that at all. You were just in the frame to receive it that way. And so I think that's a cute little thing, a little video. Plus, it's animated and it reminds you of why mm -hmm. you like that person. But yeah, I think you gotta I think you gotta be a little bit more um innovative with it because the social media stuff and it's funny because i meet people we get cases every week because somebody says you know they're a friend of dana's and then they'll go is that really a friend of dana's like well i talk to them every day on facebook several times interactions a day but have i ever met this person in real life no i have not i have not met yeah. this person i like what elizabeth said about um doing the hey i thought about you and texting them because there are so many times when I need something from somebody or I'm curious about something. The other day I was like, hey, does so, so and so, do you have uh, something from the class that we took? I mean, it was two years ago and I don't see her that much. I saw her like once or twice in the last few years, but I should have said, hey, how are you? Like, what's going on with you? Blah, blah, blah. You know, when I thought about it and I just yeah. don't. So that, so that way, whenever you're asking for fa favors, they don't seem so harsher, you know? Yeah. Because you kept up with them or what about yeah. and most of the time you're not keeping up with people not because you don't care about them but they don't matter you just literally just haven't done it it's yeah. not any sort of a you know hierarchy you know thing where they're just not important enough for your time um because I, I find i've got a, quite a lot of time you know that i should be spending you know doing things like that that bring me greater joy develop the, developing these friendships um, but your real friends, your real friends don't care if you're keeping up with them or not, because the minute you get back together with those real friends, it's like no time has passed. Right. You know? oh, These are absolutely. More like I guess not close friends. Yeah. 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 You know what I found? This is something I, I, I always did when I was uh, throughout my whole life. I would meet somebody and be friends with them. And then I would meet other people through them. Like one person yeah. I got to be real good friends with, uh, but I ended up being best friends with her sister you know, for a long time, or, um, you know, I met somebody, you, you, you can be people for all kinds of reasons, but I asked that question about, do you ever have friends who date people you don't like, or don't like you? <laughs> Cause that, that was kind of one of those things when I was growing up, you'd be, you know, trying to be a real supportive friend for your, your girlfriend well, dating this guy. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. Now that you say that, uh, uh how do I say this delicately? <laughs> I think we're all thinking. Let it be addressed to down the wrong <laughs> Are you going to address it to me? <laughs> so let's say this. I've got a really good friend. Her name is Shmaina. Shmaina Brooks. <laughs> Shmaina Brooks. And uh, well, so anyways, you have made a past selection and you may or may not have married him. And a lot of us were concerned, but it's really hard to tell that person because she's so in love and she's at a, such a good place in her life. Mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes and it seems like that it's really hard to step in and be the negative nancy and be like you know i have some concerns not yeah. wanting to receive that yeah, yeah. Well, that's what i'm saying though they're not going to receive it it's going to end your relationship or at least put a real pall on it and then yeah. you know whenever that when she does figure it out what you knew that she took a minute to figure it out then she'll be embarrassed 
you know, so it's a real touchy thing. Because I think the rule is just to always be supportive. And if it's, yeah. if it's an abusive situation, then you don't be supportive. No, you but get if it's a, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But every other situation, you just need to be supportive and be a good listener. And yeah. when they're down, you're down with them. When they're up, you're up with them. And when they fall, you catch them and they catch you when you fall, you know, I just don't think it's ever a good idea to be super critical because you're not in their shoes and you don't know what they need from that relationship. No, I will always, I I was always afraid. I, I'm sorry. He was speaking. I want to touch on the abuse thing though. That's really interesting that Carrie said you only interfere if someone's been abused or that you notice the abuse in the relationship. It's funny how I feel like we would interact if it was physical but not so much emotional or mental abuse yeah you know, we've all been around those people who you'll, you'll be out with these couples and then the guy or, or you know sometimes women do it don't misunderstand me mm. it can be creepy, but you know when they just berate the person nothing they do is good enough they're just constantly picking at them and just to, to the point where you're just like yeah. i don't want to be here i don't enjoy this i don't i feel like i'm around two bickering you know old people or whatever but yeah that psychological abuse, you know, there's a lot of people who tell you, I wish they'd just punch me in the face. <laughs> I'd rather that yeah. than, than the psychological, you know, the mind screwing every day. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it is and hard. in those cases, it's like, you've got to still be there for your friend. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is letting them know that you're still there as an outlet for them. Like, <laughs> you need to talk. I'm here uh, without, you know, alienating them or isolating them even further by saying i don't support your relationship so i can't be around you right right that yes you know when you do that you make sometimes you do have to do that though you just have to protect yourself you ever get caught up in the vortex of somebody else's drama Ooh, like i got to protect myself talk talk about boundaries you know carrie you were talking about boundaries you've got to say Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be a line between being there for you and me getting sucked up in this. I've had friends where I'm like, I hate this guy and I don't even know him. <laughs> you know, I want to murder him and I don't even know him because that's all you talk about all the time is this guy and I can't do it anymore with you. And so then you feel like a jerk because you're not supporting your friend, Yeah. but your friend really is kind of uh, over, you know, like wearing you out, like really taxing yeah. you than is necessary i think that's codependency and you don't want to it's not healthy for anybody to be in a codependent relationship so i think that's where you can use you know kind of time limits you know hey i'm at work i, can, I only have a few minutes mm-hmm. or like you said earlier you can kind of limit it to texting because it's a little bit easier to have boundaries when you limit it to texting mm-hmm. but yeah getting sucked into that because it becomes an emotional drain on you and you're carrying that burden on your shoulders on top of so many other things and i I think we all just need to be careful about dumping on our friends. You know, well, we yeah, don't want to dump. Protect yourself, you know, put your own mask on before putting yeah. it on someone else. 100%. Uh, and yeah, so there's only so No, much. no, that's. I that's- really like what Carrie said about um, whenever somebody calls you and you know that they're just going to talk about the same thing or something that, you know, feels like it's dumping to just tell them, hey, I've only got five or 10 minutes left. Yeah. I've tried to start doing that a little bit more uh, whenever people call me and I'm thinking, oh, I really don't need to talk to them right now. Heard it. First of all, don't call me. <laughs> God, you fix that problem right now. <laughs> you guys oh, are so bad. I, I, so I'm not on the don't call train. Like you can call me, I'll be fine. <laughs> no, my friend was showing me her new apartment and she did a little FaceTime and I was like, this is so awkward. I don't know how to like end this call. I don't know what we talk about. I don't know what to do. It was so No, FaceTime is a completely different thing. Do not FaceTime me. Yeah, because I'm oh, like, I don't have makeup on. I don't want you to see me right now. I mean, I, I don't even, love I don't even do video on Zoom if I don't have makeup on anymore. I'm like, they don't, want to see, <laughs> they don't want to see this. So like, whatever. But yeah, I yeah. have a question. I yeah. have a good question. Yeah. What What are we? How are we feeling about relationships with friends who are so politically in this climate on the other side of the scale? And I'm able to manage it. And I know that I have several friends that don't manage it and that everybody makes different choices and who you want to be in a friendship with and a relationship with. So how are we all dealing with that? Yeah. Who wants to go first on that one? I'll go first on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, it's really hard for me, especially this uh, last election. I, I'm very, very liberal. <laughs> like I think it's part of my identity. Um, and I, my, I had a friend who was kind of, I thought she was on my side. You know, I thought like she, we were doing, we believe the same things. Like I could easily talk to her about whatever I was thinking and she'd agree with me. 
Um, and that was not the case this election. Um, and I was just like, I don't recognize this. Like, what the heck is going on? Uh, who is this person? Um, and then we kind of, once we got out of it and out of the, the hostility of the election, I calmed down a little bit and I wasn't as upset about it. Yeah. Um, and then I actually did lose a friend over this last election. Um, and it wasn't a fight. Um, she, I, I said something about, hey, I'm so excited about this, this outcome, blah, 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 whatever. I didn't say anything bad about the other party. I didn't say anything, whatever. But um, she commented and she was like, is this, is this true? Like, is this, is this accurate? Is this, you know, you has anyone, has, has anyone but a new source said it? Has she met you or had a conversation with you prior to that? Because <laughs> yeah, I you mean, wear that on your sleeve. <laughs> So I mean, she commented that and I kept deleting it because I was just not in the place to talk to them at all. And she kept reposting it, reposting it. And she's like, she's like, I don't know what's happening, but my comment keeps going away. So she's texted me personally. And she goes, oh, I thought since you work in law, you, you know about this. And I was like, hey, I just don't want to talk about it right now. Um, you know, I'm kind of like only wanting to associate myself with people who believe the same way I do. It's no, no hate just to yeah, the yeah, yeah, election yeah. results. I just want to be with yeah. my people and we just haven't really talked since it wasn't heated it wasn't heated or anything yeah. but she didn't really respect that boundary i was putting up and yeah so that's kind of the end of that story that's gonna happen this is one thing i have learned about that because i have quite a few uh people in my orbit who are not politically oriented as i am uh we learn to not talk about that yeah but when it's real hot like it's a real hot thing like right around the election i just we, we just kind of gave each other some space, you know, because I know they want to be around like-minded people and invent mm -hmm. and get their stuff out. I want to do the same. And so we do that. And then we just wait. Eventually the dust always settles, you know, always. And then you can kind of go back together. I, I do it like this. I, I, I'd like to use this analogy about people generally. People have limits. You know, there's only so much some people can give you that's available to you. So when I look at a person, you know, think of them as a pie or a pizza or whatever, and there's certain slices that you get to see or experience with them, but it's not the whole person. And some people, I only like a very thin slice of. That's <laughs> all I need of that person's pie. Yeah. Other people, I like, you know, 80% of the pie. Uh oh. Hey, Dan. Dana, I think you might have muted yourself. Is that better? If she, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we me? have new microphones, everybody. You told, me, you told me not to touch it, so I touched it. There's no <laughs> way I'm just gonna touch we have it. New microphones. We're testing. It's like having a zit on your face. You know, I'm just, there's no way I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Um, no, I just, I think you have to, you know, understand, you know, that you're everybody's not gonna be everything, and and some people just that one part of them is not available to you. It's not something that you you and they are compatible on. And so um, I think a mature person knows to, you know, just kind of stay out of that. Uh, but you know how it is. Like I got one friend, he's, he's, you know, gets a little drinks in him. He'll start, you know, needling people over politics and stuff like that, just to try to get them riled up. And, you know, some people, they just, you know, go too far and it's a whole eruption and other people just, you know, light jab right back. So, you know, I just kind of, it's one of those things you read the room, you get the energy in the room. And if it looks like it's headed to a political discussion or a fight, I just, you know, see ya, that sort of thing. Uh, and I think also don't be presumptuous. Um, it's so natural to think everybody thinks the way you do. You know, I'm a reasonable person and I believe this. So the only person who wouldn't believe it is an unreasonable, crazy person, right? No, that's not true. That's not true. Um, what about you, Rose? How do you, or do you find that you have like-minded people or do you have to kind of tiptoe around some political stuff sometimes? Yeah, I simply don't maintain relationships with people <laughs> who I'm not politically. Oh, I know you've got high standards. Yeah, yeah, I need the whole person and that's a big- You need problem. a whole pie, I got you. And, and that's I, okay, I think that's okay too. And yeah. I think sort of kind of what um, Dana was saying about like, you assume people think the way you do, yeah. they're feeling the same way. Yeah. So, so I kind of feel like obligated to say something. I'm like, no, um, it, I, I'll, you know, I'm not racist actually. Uh, <laughs> so uh, just so they know like, hey, not everyone's on the same page and then that kills that relationship. So um, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty vocal. Uh, you know, I, I can, I can, uh, I can let some things go, 
but some things that are core value type things to me, I would have to to say something about. And, uh, you know, any kind of name calling and you know, racist, misogynistic stuff like that, I, I could not abide that. That's yeah, I had I had a, an experience recently with uh, my a, a friend's sister and um, I didn't bite my tongue about it. I'm like, I don't care if this is a relative of my friend, you can't say these slurs, you just can't. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she said, she posted something using gay as an insult. And I said, what, what year is it? <laughs> like, the, like, it's not, it's just simply not cool to do anymore. I mean, it's not appropriate, it's not okay, you know? Yeah, cruelty, cruelty is not in right now. <laughs> And then she just we're it, off right now. It was a snap, and she just opened it and then yeah. responded. And I was like, "Well, you know, I did my part. I can only speak up for for wrong, the wrong, yeah. or whatever. Speak against the wrong." I, yeah. You know, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about friendships with people who are not in your kind of core group, like uh, black friends. I'm a white person. I have black friends. Um, I have friends uh, who are from the Hispanic culture. I have friends, one of my things I'm obsessed with, anybody who really knows me very well knows I'm obsessed with uh, Jewish people. <laughs> I'm fascinated. I grew up in a, in a town and I said, I always tell people I knew two Jewish people growing up, they were brother and sister. So everything about it fascinates me. I just, I can't learn enough. I can't know enough about it. I just, I totally, totally dig it. Uh, because I've always been drawn to people who are different than me. I know what I think. I know what I believe. I want to know what all y'all think and what you believe. I mean, gosh, I don't want to be surrounded by people who just think what I think. Um, and I like to understand people who think differently. Mm -hmm. I want to know what informs your decision, because I think I'm a good person. I'm a good, reasonable person. And I believe this. So if you're a good, reasonable person, you believe opposite. I want to find out why, you know, because it's not one of us is right, what it's wrong. Um, what about that? Do y'all ever have, um, you know, kind of those little discussions, um, like with me and my black friends? I mean, there are some things that are different in our experiences and acting like they're not different is just silly, you know, let's have an honest, open discussion. Anybody struggle with that? I think it's invigorating. I mean, I, so I play soccer with a lot of people in co-ed leagues and most of them are guys. So I, I have a lot of guy friends, which are, you know, a, a lot different for me. <laughs> But to me, like when I'm interested in somebody, I ask a ton of questions. So I wind up peppering all these different people with all these different questions because I want to be their friend and I want to find out what's it like in Rwanda? What was your childhood like? Why did you leave Rwanda? You know, I am fascinated by things about people that are different. So I don't really see it as a struggle. I see it as something that just draws me to people like much like what you said, because I want to learn and I want to know. And, you know, to me, I think it's really neat to have all these different friends from different walks of life and cultures and countries and religions and race and sex and all that all that stuff me too i'm like that too carrie i'm very um curious and inquisitive mm -hmm. and i think in the wrong audience that can be offensive and i'm you know i well, i got i got called racist one time because i asked somebody a question and i mean they, they're they're allowed to feel that way um yeah. and you know they're allowed to have that experience and i'm not going to say any different but I was just asking questions, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, you, you don't know. You're like, you're trying to be respectful, inquisitive, but somebody else may take that as you presume things something. about them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so you're just asking for confirmation of a presumption you made and that feels racist. I get that 100%. And it is kind of difficult to walk around, you know, some of these issues. Um, you know, like they always talk about church is the most segregated institution in America, you know, because you People go to church with people who are very, very, very much just like them. That's the one place where you see a lot of homogeneity. Um, but yeah, I, I, I want to be sensitive to things like that. I'm sensitive to things like uh, trying to not appropriate cultures, try to not presume to know things uh, other than my own experience. But I really want to do things that encourage a dialogue and open communication. Um, I went to a lot of, I went to black schools growing up. And so I had black friends as a, as a child. And it's so funny because when I got older, my white friends would be shocked that I would know certain things about black culture. And um, then I took a class, believe it or not, I took one in graduate school called Social Work with Black Families, which was just the most awesome class. Everybody in the world should have to take that class. Uh, it, it's amazing the things that you actually don't know and understand about one another by the time you're in college. It's just, it could, it could fill, you could get a degree and, and things like that. So I, I look for diversity in my friendships. I look for 
finding ways to talk about difficult uh, issues, you know, because I'm very political, I'm very interested in that. And, you know, the things that I care about in politics that affect me as a woman, and the things that matter to me, there's a whole other layer of that. Like when I talk about empowerment and empower uh, in the power plant, that's different for a black woman, that's different for a woman of color, that's different for a woman who's disabled, trying to live in, 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 uh, and work in the same competitive environment that we're in. It's different from somebody maybe who's got an LGBTQ plus orientation. Uh, they've got a total different set of challenges. So I think with any sort of relationship, friendship, it needs to start with empathy and an understanding that your viewpoint and the way you see and experience things is not right, wrong, and it's especially not the only way. Um, what about you, Rose? Do you ever talk to some people and go, wow, I did not see it that way at all. I did not. Yeah, I think having those conversations is very valuable. It's interesting to, you know, meet people from other cultures or just other walks of life that you're like, that's not how we do it. Um, so yeah. some people do it, uh, and maybe way more people than I do it, but uh, not how I do it. So and that's something you learn. I think it's important too, though, to remember that just because you have met someone from a diverse background or right. different background, it's not now their job to educate you. Right. They're not the spokesperson. But, yeah. My, my <laughs> black friend is, I can't ask her every question about race relations and expect. Oh, I, that's a black question. <laughs> my black friend. Oh. And, and and not every, I know, is this every, racist? Yeah. Like, you can't do that to them all the time. No. So, you know, no. you, there are other I, resources, I, books, like, thought leaders, but you can't cost your, you know, one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> diverse friend. But I do recommend having, I have a, you know, a, a few close black friends, not bragging <laughs> or anything. But, it's not but a competition. It's, it's nice being like, okay, this is how I feel about the situation. Like, what can I do? Like, what, you know, how can I be a better ally? Should I just shut up? Just tell yeah. me shut up. <laughs> Sometimes I'll tell you to shut up. But here's, here's the thing, what, in whatever whatever group it is, it could be, you know, it could be anything, you know, but yeah, yeah don't, assume, is... don't assume people want your help. Don't assume they want to educate you and bring you out of your ignorance. Um, and, <laughs> but, but also don't shy away because I, I know a lot of people who just, they're like, I don't, I'm so afraid I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm so afraid I'm going to offend somebody. So yeah. I'm not even going to explore this relationship. I think in the past, we were so much taught to be colorblind or whatever. And that's not helpful. That's, mm -hmm. You can't just pretend like everybody's the same. Yeah. So. Right. Elizabeth, what were you saying? Um, one of my best friends, he's, uh, he's actually a black male. And we have these conversations all the time about, you know, the difference between our races. And we also talk about the fact that we're both minorities in the uh, field that we want to go into. Yeah. And we talk about, I, Dana, you actually uh, advised me to do this, was to talk about, you know, how whenever we're in a room together, if there's ever a time that one of us is feeling left out of the conversation or something like that, to make a motion or somehow get each other's attention to be like, hey, uh, loop me in, you know, yeah. something like that. And we've actually talked about that. And we talk about how we see things differently and we don't agree on everything. Yeah. So I think those friendships, there's a fine line between going to your one black friend, your one Mexican friend or Asian friend and asking them to speak for everyone versus yeah. asking them to speak for themselves. Right. And that's mm -hmm. really what I try and focus on is not, hey, how do black people feel about this? Right. How has your experience been with this as a that's black exactly male, right. as a Hispanic woman? Person, whether you'll like, well, if I do this, will it offend someone? It's like, you can't answer that for someone else. Yeah. Good chance. Now, some people can guide you. They'll be like, don't wear that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. It's <laughs> on some, some extreme thing. I hope white people yes. aren't asking if we should say the N-word, because, I mean, that's a clear answer. No, no, you don't. <laughs> ask never. No. Not ever. It's never okay. Never okay. Stop no, it. it. Never okay. I don't want to hear what black people say. That's, but that's them. Okay. That's that's not us. And no, we don't get to get in the middle of that. That's not our word to you use. You don't get to have it. No, no. It? Um, no. It's like, you know, somebody could call my sister a bitch, but don't, you know, yeah. I'll call her a bitch. Don't you call her a bitch, you know? No. Right. right. You know, it's one of those things. It's not your word. It's not your thing. Leave it alone. You don't get everything. So let them, let, let it go. So anyway, I, I get very frustrated over that word. I just don't see it having a, a, a use in, in, you know, 
polite society, honestly, I think it's a pejorative term. There's a lot of those though, but um, you know, I don't, I don't like to appropriate culture. I don't like to make assumptions about uh, cultures. I do want to be open to learning about them, but again, without <laughs> creating a job for somebody, oh, you're my token, this friend, why don't you represent everything about that group? No, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I, and I want to wrap up by talking about uh, friendships with men. Any of you have uh, good long-term platonic male friendships or maybe a re relationship that maybe started romantic and turned into uh, somebody ended up in, what do they call it? Friend, friendville, permanent friend, friend zone. Friend zone. Friend zone. <laughs> friendville. Yeah, what about that? Um, uh, uh, I have a lot of friends who are yeah. guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I do too. I have a few friends and I, I talk to them almost more than I do. Like I talk to my best friend, but then pretty much talk to my two guy friends the most. Yeah. Um, it might be helpful that they're in uh, straight, sorry, straight guy friends. <laughs> I guess we should say that, but they're in relationships. So it's kind of different um, in that situation as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, I got, uh, go ahead. I don't have a single straight say, guy friend, I don't think. <laughs> I was gonna say when I was growing up, you know, I've got three older brothers and um, I was always into sports and I was always a tomboy growing up. So it was very easy for me to be friends with guys. Mm -hmm. It still is. I mean, like I said earlier, I play soccer with a lot of guys. It's very, very easy. I relate really well to guys. Um, but as I get older, I find that I have to spend time on and I have to value my female relationships more because at the end of the day, we can relate to each other better on a core level as we progress in our ages and with our, you know, different lifestyles and different life choices. I still value my guy friends. They mm -hmm. make me laugh more than anybody else. And they're disgusting and funny and you know what I mean? But it's, it's just different. I find a lot of value in it personally. Um, it's very easygoing and very fun and funny. Yeah. They act a lot differently than women do. They take nothing seriously. And, you know, I can learn a lot from my relationships with my guy friends and um you know they're never gonna like let you cry on their shoulder or bring you soup when you're sick like my female friends will but yeah. they're gonna make fun of you and they're gonna make you laugh when you yeah. need to be made fun of and laugh the most and I appreciate that I love that I some too. of my best some of my best adventures like scuba diving or playing sports or traveling have really you know I I when I graduated college I backpacked through Europe with um, a guy roommate of mine and one of my best guy friends for a couple of months we did Europe together and it was fantastic wow so yeah it's good yeah that that probably I don't know if it's it accentuates the risk taking and adventure part of your personality or if you're just naturally made up that way so it makes you a good guy friend I don't know but I see that in, in, in being a, a parent of boys I, I just see you yeah. working so so well in the in the male orbit in the male environment. What about you, Elizabeth? You talked about you have a, a guy friend who's real close to you. Do you have a lot of guy friends? Um, I'm actually in a group chat with about six other guys right now. And we're talking about current events that are happening uh, that relate to us. Mm -hmm. And the group chat has been open, you know, any anybody's welcome to join it. But no one, no girls seem to be interested in the topics that we're discussing. Political? Are y'all talking about political um, events? It's political and economic. So and when I was, when I was a girl is, your age, I wasn't interested in that. I'll be honest. Most girls aren't interested in it, but I am. I want to know what's going on. I would but like to I also encourage have, other girls to get interested in things like that. Well, hmm. I've tried to. I've definitely tried to pull them in. They're like, no, I don't think I want to. I don't know anything. I have nothing to contribute. And it's just going to blow my phone up. I'm not going to read the stuff. And I said, okay, well, if you change your mind, let me know. And yeah. nothing well, happened. You know, sometimes, but sometimes being a leader, you know, helps, you know, you're influencing them and making them see that this can be interesting and they should be interested. And the reason I want them to is it's just, I want people to have a voice and decisions that affect them. And you can't do that with your head in the cloud. And if girls don't get involved and interested in it, boys will make those decisions for them. And mm -hmm. that's what I would like to see stop. I would like girls to make decisions well, for girls. I like to be informed and I like to know everything possible for me to know. So if there's a group chat where people are sending screenshots of news articles, screenshots of anything that they found on social media where we're sending back and forth information to help better each other. I mean, I, just, I can't see why somebody who's logical would decline to be a part of something like that. Well, when I was your age, it was boys and partying. <laughs> <laughs>
that that was higher level than current <laughs> events and who I was voting for. I'll tell you that. And I was here. You know, well, I'm not saying that that's like at a high level of where I focus most of my time on, but okay. it's just something no, no, you're that if I, yeah. you're I love getting the information. So I think that's another resource thing. It's like, I just can't, I have other things going on, can't devote energy to focus on this, you know, yeah. new thing. So maybe someday they'll get, get some more capacity or, you yeah. know, they'll, they'll get into it, it. But at, right now it's not priority. So yeah, you know, when, I, when I was your age, I didn't have social media and, and internet coming at me all the time. So, you know, I was, you know, I had no excuse. And now I can see it. Like Rose said, it's almost information overload. I've got too many resources. I, I, I don't even know what to make time for because there's just infinite. Yeah. Carrie. I was going to say, one of, uh, my mom said something to me maybe 20 years or so, and it's always stuck with me. And you have different friends for different things. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, mm -hmm. men or women, black or white, whatever, Hispanic, you know, Jewish, Catholic, whatever, you're going to have different groups of friends for different things. And it's okay. And it's like, okay, that, that Elizabeth has guy friends that want to talk about politics and the, you know, the economy and stuff like that. And it's okay that she might have other friends that are in the crafting or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, but so once you let that settle in and you get used to it, it's okay. Like you, somebody said earlier, it's okay that they don't they don't check every box or that you don't want the whole slice of the pie. You just want a look, you know, a little slice of the pie. I think that's a really interesting way to look at it. And something I've learned from this conversation is just it, it kind of reinforces that that um, sometimes you just need a small slice of pie with a certain friend, not the whole thing. And and vice versa, like what Rose said earlier really um, has sat with me pretty well, which is it's okay to be a person that needs the whole pie from somebody. And if you, if you don't like part of their pie to not take it, not take that person. It's, you know, different people get things, different things out of friendships. And I think it's okay to be that person that either needs all or nothing, or it's okay to be that person that can be satisfied with just a small portion of somebody. Yeah. Yeah, a buffet line. I'm a buffet line. Yeah. I'm gonna pick What's interesting people. about what you say about going to different people for different things. I, my best friend is married and I'm not. <laughs> so it's, it's, and I'll talk to her about my single escapades or whatever. And she's just like, it kind of goes over her head. And I'm like, I need someone to talk to about these things. So I do have other friends that are single and I can talk to them about it. So that's a big thing for me, for sure. Yeah, in, in developmental stages, you know, every, all through life, we continue to develop and we have different developmental challenges and needs at each stage. So that's just normal, but it's really nice whenever you have somebody carry, uh, you know, Whitney, Rose, you have these people who can uh, go your lifespan with you and grow with you throughout your developmental phases. So this was a great conversation and I, I really am excited that you all uh, joined and shared these stories. And I hope the people who watch this uh, make priorities out of these friendships and nurture these relationships because they really are enriching whenever everything else is going bad and, and, and you know, is, and nothing, nothing just seems to be working out. Sure is nice to have a friend who loves you no matter what. So thank you all. Thank you, Whitney, Rose, Elizabeth, Carrie. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you again next Thursday at 4.30 for another episode of the Empower Hour brought to you by the Empower Plant from Facing Brooks. Good evening.